everybody, my name is Valerie Greenwell. Welcome to Quilt Artistry. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about doing couching on the long arm. Um, so I have here some Bernat Blanket Extra and it is a very heavy, uh, very heavy kind of a chenille um, yarn. I, I don't know if they still call this yarn. <laughs> But anyway, whatever it is, it's very thick, it's very fluffy, and it's very soft. But what I found with this is that it was a little bit too heavy to fit through the couching foot. Um, so I'm going to be couching using the regular uh, ruler foot that came with our machine. Um, first, I want to talk a little bit about the kind of patterns that work best for doing couching on the long arm. Um, so uh, what you want to look for uh, when you're selecting a pattern is you want something that has um, a very open design. You want something that doesn't do a lot of backtracking um, and that you can blow up to a, a larger size. You want to have a lot of space in this so that as you're stitching this stuff down, um, you don't want it uh, bunching up against itself. Um, or having to stitch over itself too too much. Um, if you do that, then you're going to run into a problem with bulk and your machine may not handle that very well. Um, so if we take a look at the screen here, I'll show you uh, the patterns that I've selected for today. So uh, I went to Sweet Dreams uh, Quilt Studio and I selected the Fairhunt uh, pattern set and inside that pattern set there's probably maybe somewhere between 12 and 15 different patterns but i selected um just three for this uh quilt that i wanted to make and this is a big quilt if you if you take a look at it on the frame here um this whole quilt is about 80 by 80 give or take um and uh, what i wanted was i wanted to be able to stitch these these designs very large, very open, um, in what would be considered, you know, really a fed size quilt. Um, and so uh, I wanted to be able to blow these blocks up uh, a, a great deal. So the size that I selected for these patterns is uh, 19 and a half inches per pattern. Normally we wouldn't stitch these patterns probably quite that large, but for uh, couching it really works great. Um, so you can look at these patterns and see that, um, let me blow this up on the screen a little bit. You can see this is a very, very big, very open pattern. And you can see where it comes down to the point. It'll come down to a point and then it'll stitch back up. But there's really not a great deal of backtracking in any one of these three patterns that I selected. Uh, so that is, for, for me, that I think that is what makes these patterns ideal uh, for doing couching. Um, so uh, let's take a look at the quilt again, and I'm going to show you what I'm using um, on the frame. So I have a minty back loaded, uh, and this is the, um, the 90, uh, 90 inch wide back uh, minky. And uh, I should say, if you have never quilted on Vinky before, one of the things that you really want to remember uh, is that you load it with the selvage on the left and the right sides. That will prevent uh, the Vinky from stretching uh, or um, distorting as you roll the quilt and as you quilt. Um, so uh, I have the Vinky on the bottom. I have Quilter's Dream Select Batting, uh, Quilter's Dream Poly Select Batting. And then this is a uh, Faber Quilt Gray Titanium Gray Sateen. This is a wide back um, uh, fabric, um, and I've cut it down to 80 by 80. Um, I, I really wanted to use a solid fabric so that the uh, the chenille. Um, yarn would really stand out on that. I really wanted to have a great contrast with that. Um, and so uh, really just a, a solid backing works well. Um, so let's talk a little bit about this, this yarn and how we get it set up. So uh, again, like I said, this is a very heavy, um, like a very heavy chenille. And what I like to do is, is pull a, a big old pile of this off and I'll just kind of get a nice little puddle of this right over here. Um, in front of me 
and you can see here I have the standard ruler foot on. I am using a variegated thread that is very similar um, to my uh, yarn that I'm using. And let me put this down here. This little tool this is called a floss threader um it's actually a dental tool you can get it where you buy toothbrushes and uh dental floss um but it's great because it has this nice big hoop this big loop there and it it works well for this you just take your chenille or your yarn and you put it right through uh the end of that little loop and then you take the straight end and you can feed it right through the foot just like that, and you pull it through, and then take your floss threader off, and now it is ready to quilt. So, we're gonna get it over here in position, and, hang on, I'm on the wrong screen. Let me open up my, proper quilting group. Okay, so now that I'm on the right screen, um, we're going to tell it to start. And it's going to move into position and we pull up the bobbin thread just like normal. And what I'll do, uh, where the cut end of this is, I kind of pull it. I only need about an inch um, off to the left-hand side. And then uh, the big long strand is going off to the right. So I'm going to hit start. So I let it stitch a couple inches. And then I stop and I trim my... Uh, my starting threads and then I'll clip this close to the end. Um, something else that I forgot to mention. Um, can you take a look at the numbers on the screen? I don't know if they'll show up. No, no, they're not showing up. Yes, it is. Okay, so um, no, the numbers, the speed is not showing up. But uh, what I want to tell you is when you start this, you want to stitch this very, very slow. I have my machine set to 12 stitches per inch at a speed of eight. You want to be able to stitch this as slow as possible. One, so that you can anticipate the turn of the machine, uh, so that you can follow right along with it. Um, and two, uh, you want it to be going slower in the event that you need to stop this quickly. You need to have a little bit of reaction time. So I found that a speed of eight seems to work very well for that. So uh, we're ready to stitch again. We're going to hit resume. And you can see it really just kind of pulls it the direction that it needs to go. And I try to feed it back to the machine or back to the foot in the direction that it's going to go. The rest of it really goes pretty easily. You just kind of want to follow along with it so that you can feed this in the right direction. You want to make sure that your, uh, that your lead yarn is out front. You don't want it laying down on the quilt top because you don't want it to accidentally get stitched down um, before it's supposed to. One of the other things that I like about these patterns is that they are so symmetrical. Once you've stitched one of these, you can really anticipate um, the direction of the machine and where it's going to go. And you can see that really just stitches down nicely. It's not going anywhere. And kids really love these um, couched uh, quilts like this because it's tactile. It gives them something soft and fluffy to snuggle up against. So 
I, I like to pause it when I need to readjust my puddle or unspool a little bit more. That way, um, what you don't want, you don't want your machine to have to pull or tug on this at all. This should not create any more additional work or, or on your machine at all. So you need to be prepared and, and have that ready to go and ready to feed. And uh, if you need to stop it and pause it to readjust, then that's what you do. So this quilt that I'm working on right now has 16 blocks. They are uh, four rows of four. If you wanted to do a 12 block quilt at 19 inches, 19 and a half inches per block, then one skein of this yarn would be enough to do the entire quilt. Um, I got all 12 rows done uh, and I wasn't even finished with the first, uh, with the first skein yet. I love the way this stitches out. It, it's like magic watching it all lay down like that. When it's stitching backwards and it has to pull that backwards a little bit, I really like to try to make sure I've got this in a good position for it um, so that it all gets stitched. Since this isn't the normal way that we do couching, this is not the native foot for this task, um, there is always a possibility that maybe, uh, that maybe the stitching may not grab every single piece of this. Um, normally with the regular couching foot, let me get the, the regular couching foot. So as you can see here, um, this couching foot has a very, very small hole. And although I could get this through there, it, it made the machine have to work harder to tug it through that little tiny hole. Um, and I could hear when I first tried it, um, I could hear the machine struggling and that's not what I wanted. Uh, so we went to uh, the standard ruler foot for this because it's so heavy. Um, and this really uh, turned out to work well. For the size of these blocks at 19 and a half inches, um, because they're not really a very dense pattern at all, it takes about maybe 10 to 12 minutes to stitch each block, um, which is not really a whole lot. Get a little bit more here. Almost done. And that is really it for it. When it's finished, I just back it up a little bit and cut my thread, just like normal. Make sure I get the popping thread cut. And now I'm just gonna snip right close to the edge of where that stitch ended, right there. And now, if I leave, I leave my chenille through the foot, I can pull it right over here, and then I'm ready to stitch the next block. And really, folks, that's, that's all there is to it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stitch these last three blocks. I hope you found this video helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, send me a message and let me know. Thanks. Have a great day.